Squash bugs are possibly one of the most problematic insect pests for anyone growing squashes in New Mexico. Squash bugs use their piercing, sucking mouth parts to suck plant fluids from leaves and fruits. High populations can take out a crop and they are difficult to control, even with pesticides. Chemical applications generally target the nymph stage and are applied early in the morning when it is least harmful for the plant and for pollinator and beneficial insect populations, which help with fruit set and natural pest control. Organic growers have even less options. Pyganic, a broad spectrum organic label pesticide made from pyrethrin, is one that growers in New Mexico keep in their toolbox. To keep on top of the squash bugs, Growers start scouting when plants are about a foot tall. It's a tedious task, but they will search for egg clusters in the leaf veins and remove them. Other tools include planting less susceptible varieties and keeping more of an eye on the more susceptible ones, like blue hubbard and pumpkin. After harvest, plant debris is removed from the field to limit overwintering habitat for the squash bug. These non-chemical practices help out the pollinators too. We do a lot of varieties. Uh, we do the Delica, which is a kind of an old, bigger squash. Uh, the, the zucchini, yellow squash, um, button squash, acorn, spaghetti. Um, those are the main ones. Squash yeah, bugs. Squash bugs. Squash <laughs> bugs. I mean, they can be a nightmare. You know that. I do. So when I first started as a student in 2010, um, we had a real nice, lush squash section. And, of course, here they come. And um, at that time, you know, we're organic. We don't mm -hmm. use any um, chemicals. So at that time, the gardener, he was my supervisor, and he said, he was like, I don't know what to do other than put them between two boards and smash them. So what we started doing was pulling the leaves. With the, mm -hmm. uh, we check the leaves every morning for eggs and then just pull those, put them in like something to smother them. Mm -hmm. And so that kept them at bay that year. Um, there was a stretch, a few year stretch that I wasn't here. I didn't. I was doing other things, and during that stretch, um, I was told that they had, they just got taken over with squash bugs, and so uh, at that time, that director of our program, when I came back, um, she didn't want them to really grow much because it was such a problem, mm -hmm. and they couldn't keep it under control. So one of our students. She's from Oklahoma, and she wanted to grow watermelons. And um, so she kind of had to convince our director. And so I was like, well, what are you going to do? How are you going to do it? She said, I'll do a research project. We'll say, I was like, perfect. And so she developed the research um, with squash and plants, pest control that way. Mm -hmm. So through her research, we found out that um, the best plants – to grow with them were petunia, marigold, and nasturtium. And over the years, we have I have found that um, nasturtium is really great. Uh, so anytime we grow any squash or any kind of squash family, we're putting nasturtium in with it. And um, I like that one particularly because it's the flowers edible. Yeah, so that's like the big, like that's the big, big turnaround, you know, the big, we don't get them as bad now. We get them some, mm -hmm. but nothing like before. And um, again, we still go back. If we start to see some, we'll go back and check under each leaf. And if we find some with the cluster, we just pull it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we've, we've had a lot of success with that. The, the other pest controls that we, the other pests that we have besides squash bugs are a big deal, are aphids. Mm -hmm. And that's mostly in the greenhouse. And um, we use, um, well, it depends now because we have the bees. 
Before the bees, we would um, dust uh, diatomaceous earth on them mm -hmm. to you know kill them right away. Yeah. And then to keep them at bay, just neem, neem oil. Mm -hmm. And that worked, that was really successful. Now we don't use the, um, especially when the bees are out and flying, if it's winter, we'll go ahead and use the diatomaceous earth. But they'll break down the bees too, just mm -hmm. the way they will the, the aphids. So we don't use it in the summertime or like this time of year when they're start, starting to kind of get around. Um, but we haven't had a problem yet, knock on wood. <laughs> but um, yeah, we just use neem. And um, just, you know, I just like to keep it simple. Yeah, we try to, um, in our garden also, we do, we, every section is companion plants. So that may be a, another something that's helping. Um, because, you know, with companion plants, they keep pests away, they improve flavor, they improve mm -hmm. yield. And we've had some nice success with that too. And again, you know, the reason we even started with that, the first, first reason, as um, which came to mind was they asked us to grow more at the they I mean administration we were like is there a way you can grow more and like, yeah we can do that and then on top of that um, this is more of a it's more indigenous way of growing you know we don't do monocrops not not traditionally and um, the same way with our, our villages and our our people are the way we live as people. Um, we're not alone. We're never mm -hmm. alone. We always have that community, and so plants and people, you know, they're so similar. And, right. Um, that's a just that's a nice teaching and an example of how we live in our in our home places. Mm -hmm.